Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on The Flash Season 8. Today we're going to be talking about Episode 17. This is going to be my review and breakdown of last night's episode. I will say straight up, I really like the Thorn and Barry scenes in this episode and what it teases with the ending scene, because we have to talk about the ending scene. I really can't wait to talk about it. But there was also some bits that wasn't so hot on in this episode, and we'll discuss that all in depth in this review okay so if you do go on to enjoy the video please be sure to leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any dc tv videos later this year all right so this episode like i mentioned i thought was pretty good but at times it was definitely hard to watch and i would say it's definitely hard to watch whenever the allegra stuff was happening on screen and this time it actually wasn't because of allegra but because of her colleagues and we'll get into it later in the video but they were just very very annoying to me and i know a lot of people online were talking about this like why hasn't taylor been fired why is the boss of the group you know taking this basically so it was annoying but you have to accept it, sometimes they gotta bring in these annoying characters to kind of boost our characters forward in some way, I guess. But before we get into this, I wanna remind you guys, go check out yesterday's live stream. We talked about The Flash and we talked about Superman Lois and also the cancellation of lots of the Arrowverse shows. And also yesterday, there was a Superman Lois episode review that I put up and we break down that episode into full depth. So in case you missed that, this is your reminder. Go check it out, it's on the channel right now. But for now, let's go ahead and jump into today's episode. Okay, so the Flash shows up at the start of the episode to a laboratory. And so he's responding to an alarm that went off. And by the time he gets there, he shows up and apparently he's already been there and he saved all of them by whizzing them out, by doing his funnel technique. But as far as we're aware, and as far as Barry's aware, he wasn't there. So his suspicions are initially straight away raised, and so are we. We're like, who is this? Obviously, we have some hints due to behind the scenes information that we've had for a while now. However, this is a big mystery for Barry, and he figures out, what am I going to do? And so when he's back at Star Labs, he basically says, Thorn is locked up. There's no Velocity X that's available for people on the street, so it's not that. Also, there's no forces around, and Godspeed is gone, so who could it be? And it's obviously not someone good that Barry knows, because they would have notified him if they were coming to Central City, and if they did something. And so this mysterious speedster at the start of the episode causes this explosion in the lab for unknown reasons. And we obviously get the answers to that at the end of the episode, but we'll get to that when we get to it. But for now, Barry and Joe talk, and so... He talks a little bit about how Caitlin hasn't responded to Barry since they had, you know, their big moment in the previous episode when Barry literally blew up all of her science experiments to do with trying to bring Frost back. And also I have to mention this episode was directed by Danielle Panabaker, who plays Caitlin and Frost. So that's primarily why she wasn't in this episode. Also, I think she's taking a break because Caitlin has like a tiny scene at the end of the episode where she pops up on a computer screen at Star Labs and basically says, I need some distance, I need some time, so I'm going to be going away for a while. And there is no specific amount of time that she's going away for, so it could be a multitude of episodes. I don't know if it's the whole season. I haven't stayed up to date in regards to Caitlyn being on set and Danielle specifically being there, but I would presume she would return before the end of the season. And so in this scene with Barry and Joe, Cecile shows up for a moment. That is like her one moment in the entire episode. And same with Joe. They are basically off to go find Jenna a place at a kindergarten. And just like a fun little Easter egg, Jenna has a Batwoman backpack. I thought that was a nice little nod to Batwoman, especially since Batwoman is gone. I mean, they didn't know that at the time, but still, nice Easter egg. Okay, so let's go into the Allegra stuff, because this episode is big on her, and this season as a whole has been very big on Allegra. And this is a character that Eric Wallace created when he first came on as showrunner. He's definitely been championing Allegra and her story because you've seen like multiple characters from her past show up recently. And also in previous seasons, like last season, there was her cousin who appeared many times and also appeared this season as well. It's a recurring theme that Allegra's past is always coming back for her. And this is a big thing in this episode as she is confronted with her past face on 
and she has to do it with her colleagues, which she doesn't really like. Okay, so the first scene where we see Allegra, she's confronted by the annoying reporter, aka Taylor, who everyone hates. I think she is possibly the worst character on the show right now. No offense to the actor, but I just don't buy it. It's just so annoying. It's like completely CW and really, really stupid and very childish, actually. But that's just my opinion, and I feel like most of you agree with that, so I don't feel bad in being a little bit mean because I think it's the truth, like the character is supposed to be annoying and she is and that's literally what her character is there to do, to be a nuisance for Allegra. And so she shows up at CC System Media asking Allegra, who is the new kind of temporary replacement for Iris, to run the story and this story that she's trying to run with is actually to do with the Flash's ally and this ally hasn't been seen properly on camera because every time someone tries to take a photo there's always light obscuring over her face. I thought that was a little bit of a funny way to kind of introduce Allegra. People have been questioning why Allegra doesn't have a costume, why doesn't she have like a secret identity. Well, we are actually going into that in this episode and it turns out the cameras can't actually take a photo of her, which kind of makes sense considering her powers are light based but I think it's a little bit of a cop out if you ask me. So that's just like a tiny nitpick. But Allegra talks to her friend from prison who returns. I forgot her name, but I did write it down and I will get back to it when I remember her name. But she shows up and they used to be in the gang together and she basically is confronting Allegra being like, look, the gang that we used to work for in Keystone City they are now coming to Central City and they want me. They want to rehire me or they're going to kill me. That's pretty much the deal that she's got. And so, yeah, this is definitely an Allegra story from the past and they're trying to bring it to the present. And talking about the present, when they meet in CC Jitters, a member of the gang is actually just like chilling there. They were tailing Allegra's friend. And so they take a photo of the two of them together so they know that they're reuniting and they know kind of what they're up to and obviously we got the gang back so Sunshine is there and also her accomplice Dr. Light and so they are back and they are here to cause havoc and they are not very good villains if I'm completely honest like half the time when they are trying to attack they are standing still like one time Sunshine is in front of Allegra and she literally just stands there cracks a one-liner and kind of like smirks and does nothing like it's not intimidating at all I get that she has powers and she doesn't need to you know confront Allegra face on however it's just not very convincing I think it's actually not very good acting in my opinion and I just don't like those characters they are not interesting they are tied up to the black hole storyline that is old we don't need to go back into that and I get it that they are linked to Allegra's past and that's why we bring them back. But can we please not bring back all of these really not so good villains like we've seen in this past season especially. Like they keep on bringing them back. Like Goldface was back. I wouldn't be surprised if Amunet Black comes back at some point. Can we just get rid of them? Like that is just me asking. Okay, so let's go back to Barry. So Barry is starting an investigation into the explosion at the lab. And so it's an experimental device that is missing from this specific container that was made to hold such an item and only that item. And Barry at this point decides to go see Thorn because he figures maybe it's him. However, it's probably not him. And if I go to Thorn, he can give me the answers because maybe he knows about another speedster. And back at CC System Media, Allegra is being the boss. She is doing a presentation to her team about the gang and about the villains that are coming after her and she thinks this is very important and it would be a great story for them to break and obviously it's very personally important to her but she won't reveal to the team that she is personally involved to them and she has ties to them from the past and in this presentation I was just really kind of annoyed because there was so much back talk to her she's supposed to be their boss she could fire them at any time and I just thought, again, this is another red flag for Taylor. The writing and the acting, it's just all completely off. It makes no sense 
why she would back chat Allegra so much. I get it that they have conflict, that's fine. But this episode was very unrealistic with the way that she was reacting. I really feel like no one would do that in real life. So that's another big nitpick for me. I feel like the main downside to the episode was 100% Taylor and every time she showed up on screen. But that's just what I thought. And tell me what do you think. Do you agree actually in the comments below? Let me know. Okay, so... Chester shows up at CC Citizen Media to help out Lydia, that is her name, Lydia is Allegra's friend from the past, and so we saw her recently, she actually helped her out by doing an article on her, basically showing that she isn't a criminal anymore, that she's kind of reformed and she's different, and so she wants to conceal her identity during the interview that they are going to conduct to stay anonymous. But with the photo out there, it's pretty obvious what they are doing considering she is talking to Allegra and they are now at CC System Media and it's pretty clear that the gang have actually been tailing her and they know exactly what she's planning. So things don't turn out good as they attack CC System Media and Sunshine just stands there staring, cracking one-liners. She's like, sorry ladies, it's the end of the world and just stares and waves and I don't know, it's just not convincing, I talked about that too much. But anyway, so Chester saves them by putting up this kind of force field, uh, that's what I would describe it as, I don't know. But after this, Sunshine just kind of hangs around outside, kind of all creepily just like smirking, standing there literally still looking at them because she's just trying to be intimidating I guess. And at one point she disappears and Taylor's like, Sunshine just flipping disappeared and that was the funniest moment of the episode for me. I, I couldn't stop laughing like I was just completely laughing to myself. That was a really bad moment like oh god. Anyway, let's continue. So with Allegra knowing so much about the gang everyone starts to question how does she know so much about them considering that they are not popularly known to the press so allegra's true motivations and the reason why she's going after this case is put into question but let's go back to a more positive side of the story we got barry who arrives finally on lian yu thorn is there barry confronts him it's great to have thorn back he blames barry for his terrible condition that he's in he feels so weak he says he can only walk across the cell in 5 seconds, that's the time that would have taken him to run around the world and back. And so it's just great to see the two of them going back and forth against each other. Thorn also somehow knows about Frost dying, which is very curious, does he have a mole inside Team Flash or around the area that's spying for him? I don't know. But he also reveals that he found a new speedster to Thorn, that being Barry revealing to Thorn, and he reacts in a curious way. As Barry asks him about could there be any other negative speedsters out there that are tapped into the negative speed force that Barry is unaware of, and Barry thinks someone could have been a speedster for a while but has been hiding it, which turns out to be the truth in some way, but Thorn won't help him because there is no benefit to him, Thorn is also jealous of the new speedster who is living. Then Barry goes on to prod Thorn even more by teasing him that he's been replaced and then Thorn almost bursts out crying. He is extremely emotional about his attachment to Barry and at first it sounded kind of romantic but then he just says it's the anger that he feels to him, the hate that he has inside of him is unlike anything else in the world and that is their attachment and that's why he's so annoyed and kind of jealous about this other speedster because they have the power that he needs in order to try and finally destroy the Flash. But this new speedster feels nothing for Barry, and that's clear by the crime scene. So there is another reason that they don't want to be found, that's what Thorn reveals to Barry. And so the fire was an accident, and they can't control their abilities, that is the other reason. So that's why they're trying to keep it low key as they train themselves some more. Let's go back to Allegra's story, so Taylor had a contact look into her boss, which is again another big red flag because you would be fired if you were looking into your boss and spying on them. And so she found Allegra's juvenile records and she exposed them to the team and the team flip on Allegra, they're like what the hell we can't trust you, usual CW stuff 
and pretty much Allegra has to prove to the team that she's actually a good leader and that she's going into all of this with the right intentions and meanwhile this is happening Allegra after this reveal is having a crisis she is actually quite good in this episode like I feel this wasn't a proper flash episode because it was so Allegra centric however Lydia convinces Allegra that she's a good person and from here she actually has some really good scenes where she confronts the villains and I'm not talking about the villains, the villains weren't good, but Allegra, I actually kind of felt for her in that moment when she had everyone flip on her. And I actually thought the actress that plays Allegra did a pretty good job, to be honest, and that is going against a lot of my thoughts from the past because I'm not a huge Allegra fan, I'm pretty sure you guys know that. And so Allegra has a plan, and it's definitely dragging on, like they dragged this episode out quite a bit in terms of the Allegra story, like it's just the villain standing outside the door for... The whole episode pretty much whilst the conflict between the team at cc system media continues and is the main kind of source of their kind of story in this episode and so allegra reveals to all of them that she is the light matter in those photos and that she works with the flash this is a big reveal for allegra and she kind of changed everyone's mind about her because she's done good and they realized that and so that's why they kind of trust her in the end because she's worked with the flash she's a superhero at the end of the day, even if she's not super open about what she does. Okay, so the villains just stand outside the door, they are not very convincing at all, but Sunshine is just there, cracking more one-liners, and when she eventually breaks in, Allegra faces off against them as a distraction, and she goes supernova, she goes into that kind of godlike form that we've seen her in before, and she's able to take down both of them, and she says, bring it on, bitch. I was like, thank you, finally someone said it. It's true, she is ready to kick some ass, and those villains deserve it. And so whilst Allegra is distracting them, they go live with an interview, and they manage to get like 20 million views, and they expose the gang and who's running the gang, and so the police are able to seize their assets and put APBs out on them, like basically, if they are seen, they're going to be arrested. However, I don't know if they told the police that they are metas, so it's going to be pretty tough to take them down, but if they ever come back, which they probably will come back, considering this is something they're teasing and they want to continue with this Allegra story, we're going to be taking them down, probably along with the Flash this time, which would be good. And so, Allegra thanks the team at the end of the day, and there is a small moment between Allegra and Taylor, and she is thankful that she trusted her, which I get, but also, she's been a complete asshole to Allegra, so she should have been fired like Taylor even admitted to Allegra. There was no way that was acceptable behavior, even under the circumstances. But finally, back at Star Labs, Barry is back from Lian Yu. The next day, Allegra and Chester talk about what happened at CC Citizen Media with them being attacked. Obviously, Barry was MIA, very conveniently, and Allegra had to stand up and save them and stop the villains and expose them. And so that's when we get the call from Caitlyn, and then the ending. Now, I've been excited to talk about this ending since I watched the episode. So a new speedster shows up, and that speedster shows up at Ivo Labs, where we just previously were. She returns the tech that she saw. She is all masked up, you can kind of see her eyes, and that's about it. And so Barry and her run around the lab as Barry shows up to try and stop her and figure out who she is but she can't control her powers. She's like off balance a whole bunch of times as she's running and she throws lightning at Barry eventually and it's white and black lightning. It looks pretty artificial and turns out it is artificial and she's not a super villain and she's sorry about stealing, which is a nice twist for the show because that's literally never happened before. And so she's not a natural speedster. She got powers by doing experiments at her labs and it's revealed that she was the original maker of the Newton battery, which Barry definitely knows about, and he's a big fan of this person, and this person, under the mask, turns out to be Mina Darwin, or Dr. Mina Darwin, and she is the CEO of Fast Track Labs. We've seen Fast Track Labs this season with Avery Ho, who is also a speedster, so I wonder if she's been working with Mina, and that's how Avery gets speedster powers as well at some point. That's definitely... A big possibility considering that Avery has been set up with a story with Bart and I would reckon she's gonna get powers at some point and maybe she is her partner at Fast Track Labs 
but she's been running trials with her team. She just wants to use her gifts to help people and at this point, Barry says, look, when I first started, I had a mentor. You need someone to teach you if you want to use your abilities to help people and he trusts her. He knows Mina Darwin as a scientist and as someone who is quite renowned in his industry. So he offers her to help her and actually mentor her like Harrison Wells did to him in season one. But that is how the episode ends. So that is about it for this video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment. It really helps out the channel. Also, subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any future videos. And you can click on the top right corner of the screen to watch my latest video. But for now, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye. I see red.